Yep. Okay, Leo, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, what I want to say is that, okay, um, we assume if we have a different poses uh, from different cameras, so we are seeing, um, uh, taking images for this, uh, of course, I know that this is not a perfect way, but uh, but this is the image that I, I just use it to illustrate what I mean. So uh, we assume that from from the images that we are taking, that this is the, the correct place uh, that we uh, we should be pointing to uh, at the moment, or this, or this is the correct location. But in reality, when we make a, a 3D model from the images that we are taking, so this is the, actually the correct point not not this one so the difference between here and here this is what we call the uh, reprojection uh, error okay and if you look here and here so this so this is the correct one this is the wrong one this is the correct one and this is the wrong one so we need to correct that uh, that error or to detect it or and minimize it we will not be able to kill it 100%. We just want to minimize that. Did I make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So, yes, I think now we can share your screen and then you can continue. So, um, Leo, do you know what's the difference between projected and observed? And so, projected would be like the approximation of where it is. Okay. So, um, okay. And I would say that, um, so the projected is like, that we use a computer vision model to be actually uh, predict predict or even estimate um, uh, the 3D models uh, from different images. This is projected, but observed is is actually the raw data that's coming from the cameras. Okay, so what we what we can write is a reprojection is that this is actually actually the difference. We want to minimize the difference between the um, observed images and uh, uh, yeah, the, yeah, we can say observed images and uh, uh, projection uh, of the images. The cost function is a mathematical function.
let me explain about the cost function before you proceed to the optimization. So uh, the cost function is actually formulated uh, and um, uh, it takes into an account uh, many different things. And some of them is that um, they consider the camera pose, camera characteristic, uh, 3D points, and corresponding two points as an input. Okay. And then, um, uh, so they, they use that and uh, they want to output what? They want the end result uh, that is a 3D map that incorporates 3D points um, that, that is consistent and accurate. Uh, based on an input from different camera frames from different angles. So first we use the mathematical function to, to do uh, this, to consider many things, which is uh, camera pose, camera char characteristics, 3D points, and uh, two, 2D points corresponding to D points as input. And then we use optimization algorithm to adjust the 3D points um, such that the reprojection error is minimized. I need to say again. Uh, no, I, I understand. Um, you are you are reading the questions from from which document? Uh, the the one that includes the UML diagrams and the code. Um, I prefer that you read the questions because I I know some questions actually I I believe that you should be able to know it uh, easily. But okay. Um, I I mean. When I choose, I choose only selected uh, questions so that because it will take so long time to go through all the questions. So oh, I believe okay. uh, try to stick to the to the second PDF files just to read the questions that we uh, would like to answer now. 
So we were able to focus only on the important one. And uh, mutator actually, um, it is a method that access private variable. Uh, not instance or static, it's private variables. Liu, um, actually, yes. can I know um, from what you have understood so far, uh, th there is two, two um, I would say two arrays, right? Yes. Okay, have you seen any code that you can relate to that array? So you see uh, on page three, uh, he's talking about two arrays and he's trying to do some kind of uh, sorting for that two arrays, can you see oh, yeah. page three and page four? So, so what is he's trying to tell you that he wants you to tell him how you can uh, actually build that uh, temporary um, uh, temporary swimmer and temporary time. And then if you look at also page three, you will see that he is illustrating two arrays that got a swimmer and time. And swimmer is actually a class, okay? And if you see, he, he actually named one of the arrays races and then he opened square bracket zero and then races square brackets one. And this race is actually uh, part of. Um, did you did you first recognize it's part of which um, which class? We have many classes here. Am I right? Yes. How, we have it's a swimmer class. Event. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So it means that he has the information distributed. In, in two arrays. And if he want to do some kind of sorting, he cannot sort them when it, when they are in, in two arrays. He have to put them in one, one big array to be able to actually sort them. So do you understand now what is the purpose of that question when he's telling you 
that he want to move um, uh, he, he want to move all the information into uh, temporary swimmer and temporary time. Yes. Okay. So are we able to consider that uh, this, uh, this information that he's sharing with us that is in a race zero and race one, race zero and race one like that, are we able to consider this as a 2D array? Well, it is like arrays inside like an array, so. I guess you could, yeah. Okay, so typically with any 2D arrays, uh, we have how many for loops? If you want uh, to two. iterate, yes, okay. That's it. Yeah. So I think maybe you can start with a 2D, uh, with a 2D uh, iteration loops, and then you start to modify um, something out from there. There's two arrays inside each, like, race object. Uh, yes, we, yes, it's true. It's two, two uh, arrays. So, actually, race, race itself, uh, I believe it's kind of uh, two rows. Each row, each row have, have uh, two information. Am I right? Yes. Swimmer and time. I see the key is by looking into this. Um, so it means, could it be, it means that every row have actually um, two information inside it, huh? Uh, yes. The swimmer and the time. So, uh, can you look first at the race, race object? This is in page one. The, yeah, the U, U, UML. Oh, it has access to methods. I see. So actually, when I look at it, I don't really look at the method because I just want to know what is the content inside the race class. I see a swimmer, a swimmer uh, uh, object, and see a time. So it means that every row inside the race is actually just a race. Um, um, is it in, inside every every um, so we have 2D array that is called races, and inside it, 
we have single race objects. And inside every single race object, there is a swimmer and time information. So in short, I would say that the drawing that he's providing is slightly confusing. This is row zero, this is row one. So it is just bare to the arrays, except that every position here, there is an, an object of type race. And inside that race, you will find swimmer and time. The way he is putting it to you, he make you think that actually it's not really 2D array. I think it's, it's slightly confusing. And just don't forget that your target, your final target is actually to build temporary swimmer and temporary time. So if you have two rows, here in a 2D array, you would like to elongate that in actually one row array so that you are able to sort it because um, you are only able to sort one, one D arrays, not 2D arrays. It is fine that you start like that. It's fine. It, it, what you're doing is fine. So if I have each row got eight swimmers, let's assume it's eight swimmers, okay? So if I have eight in the first row and another eight in the second row, and I want to, to put them in an array that have actually all of them, But uh, one array will have uh, the swimmer, and another array will have only the time. How would I like access the uh, swimmer object here? Or the, the swimmer uh, value here? In the so, idiot, right? Okay. First, um, what, what you are trying to do here is that you are trying to get each information here, each object, and, and then get out the swimmer, put it in, a, in a one array, and get out the time, put it in another array because we have to create two, two arrays here, like we said, okay? So that is a way to get out the information. So that should be, you should assign the information, you get it out from here into something that is related to the temporary swimmer and temporary time. So the, the point that, okay, at the first, when, your eye is uh, at zero, you will be here, okay? And uh, you use, so, okay, uh, first, this is I, and then inside, when you are inside the row zero, then you will find that you need to go through uh, all the columns, right? So inside yep. here, there is what? What do we have inside here? Inside the races uh, uh, array, I think we need to look at um, look at page two. 
how he actually uh, builds the races, I think, inside the constructor, the event constructor. But Leo, um, one thing also to consider here, that uh, actually, that actually one thing just uh, inside, if you look at page one, you see the race class. Actually inside the race class, the swimmer information is actually inside an, another array. And that's why I think that's slightly confusing to you. So we have uh, an object race. If we look at uh, this, let me draw it here. So if I take an object, a single object from this position, inside that object, there is, inside that place, give me a second, please. I'm sorry, Leo. Um, so yeah, let me continue, Leo. Inside here, we said there is a race object. The problem with the race object, it's not just an object for a single a swimmer. No, it's actually we got uh, eight, an array of eight swimmers inside. Is that correct or wrong? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay, so the then how Um, Normally, for this kind of thing, there's like a getter, but there isn't any here, so uh. So uh, I think, yes, you are approaching the correct way, but except that you need to just remove that J. So it is uh, race uh, I and then swimmer um, J, yes.
the problem oh, do I have to add so I mean um, the problem here that a temporary swimmer is actually a, a swimmer it's a list of swimmers okay so what you are doing if you are adding it the way that you are adding it now um, you are not dealing with it as, a, as if it is a swimmer it is Oh, they don't have to. Uh... Actually, is it too strong? Again, sorry? No, I don't think I have to, right? Hey, too strong. Too, too strong means, sorry? Wait, I, I wouldn't have to use a two string method in this uh, situation, right? No, no, but but the key, the key here that I would like you to, to understand that uh, first, we are not able to use J, okay? Because J is limited to um to from from zero to to eight, right? Yeah. Uh, suppose from even zero to seven, if I'm not mistaken, um from zero to seven, not from zero to eight. So from from zero to seven. Um, but the problem is no, this is from zero to seven. Okay. The the thing is, if you want to use J, it wouldn't be uh, workable because. At the end, you will end up in one array. Uh, you looping one time, and then in, on the second time you loop, you loop also from zero to seven, and then means that you replace what you have already uh, inserted in the previous time. When you create one D array to contain two rows, it means that you need double uh, the, the information or the, so you need to, You need to have one D array from zero to fifteen, so it can carry sixteen objects uh, or sixteen uh, uh, element list. So it means that what you are using here as a J, you should create. No, 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 no. The 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 problem is not here at all. The problem is here. You are not able to uh, when you you are building a totally new array. Yeah. When you when you if are I building. Change J to. Oh. No. The, see, I understand that. Uh, see, you, you are not able to to loop through a sixteen because when you change the row, oh, yeah. you have to start from zero again here. Okay, uh, so this this two is a standard, no playing. I understand this this technique actually. Uh, if you didn't see before, um, it's very hard for you to to do it. So I will try to take you a little bit by little bit. Now this is two D. And it have two rows. We know we want to put the information this here, and then after we reach, uh, let's assume that this is position seven. Okay, so after the position seven, we need to put this information in row one, starting from here until fifteen, and this will correspond to this. So it means that this is having an index that is totally different from um from from the either the j or even the i but so the easier way easier way just to create a new variable you call it index or or whatever index count and then it let it grow so let it grow means that every time you insert something you increment it okay and typically since we already know that there is a well-defined positions here so once you end up in this position you will find yourself here yes 
I know this is challenging, but uh, I tell you, every programmer who never seen that kind of uh, method, um, okay, it's 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 clear. The the point here that okay, first the final final thing before we um, before we end up here the class, I just want to highlight one thing to you. First, you don't need to use the name, okay. And the point here that here you want you want to use actually swimmer, okay. So temporary swimmer dot or temporary swim as it is oh temporary swimmer okay. Um, So you say you have to say dot swimmer, and actually that should carry the count. This is an object, and in this is um, a, a list of of swimmers, and inside it you put a swimmer, and then you assign that swimmer inside it here. It's confusing. Is it confusing? Oh, no, it's fine. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I understand uh, um, okay, so let's continue tomorrow. Um, and also, if you still um, did not catch it very well, we can also discuss about it tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so see you tomorrow, yeah. Liv. Take care. Okay. Thank you. Thanks.